Okay, um, obviously, I think I may be reviewing one show tonight. And the review that we are doing right now is AEW because I was going to watch NXT, you know, right after AEW and then come with a review. But after what I kind of saw and kind of heard throughout the night, I think NXT didn't even have anything on but pretty much an entire video package show and literally almost one hour being dedicated to Gargano and Champa. So, I, and this is just me after watching like 20 minutes of it. So, this isn't a review on NXT, but I'm kind of saying this right now. I don't think I'm going to be doing an NXT review tonight. So, I think we're just going to do an AEW one because... It's I don't know they just they just didn't I guess they didn't try I feel like they could have done something tonight I, and I I know it's not a lot going on around right now but um they they I'll just say they really could have done something to just play over just two hours of video packages then one of them looks like a documentary then so after watching twenty minutes of it I'm like you know what? I'm just gonna go do my um, dynamite review right now then because I don't think it was uh wasn't really worth it just kind of sitting there continuing to watch um nxt i may go back and check on it but i don't think i'm gonna be reviewing it but we will get into AEW right now a lot of mixed op opinions tonight to what i've been seeing about dynamite and there's a lot to talk about especially when you're doing a show in front of no people which is going to be looking like with a lot of wrestling shows right now which we have already seen between both Raw and SmackDown. Now, unless you have a show right now and have some content and have it taped, you know, like Ring of Honor or MLW and Impact or whoever companies you are, um, then you at least got something for people to watch. But then again, anything after that, like a pay-per-view or any future event that is posted is most likely moved or canceled or just moved back to a later date. <clears throat> especially in these times of this whole corona virus thing going on but aw tonight i will say this they did put on a show now i know some people think it wasn't the best idea and there's been many mixed opinions into going into that of should there have been a show or not now i know some people said there's no point in doing it because a it's in front of no crowd there are no fans and it looks odd and yes it did look odd like that looking at raw and smackdown the other night also especially in playing a video pack playing video packages and not video packages but um um but that video package especially just going out there in front of no crowd but a lot of people i know said this was probably not a good idea you shouldn't do it in front of a crowd and everything and it's it's strange don't get me wrong because even i wonder like okay what's gonna happen because aw did not have a crowd tonight and i saw some people say you know they could just put some highlight uh packages for aw tonight i'm saying like dude do they have enough content to fill in two hours how long has this company been going that would look pretty boring but they've had a week to prepare because i've seen a lot of comparisons tonight on this also that well WWE didn't do this but aw at least has had a week to uh prepare this corona thing did hit WWE the last minute when you're trying to build up WrestleMania and then you just have to move everything to Performance Center because, you know, no one's not going to let anybody in any type of arena right now due to this whole virus. AEW, we all know who owns uh, Daly's Place and of uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars, you know, the Khan family. So, of course, AEW is going to be able to use this big building. Now, it was, um, you know, kicking off the show, it was dark. Very dark, uh, there was no crowd, and Cody was the first one in the ring to cut a promo. Okay, he so, said, you know, you thought the world this small before, how small we are, and it's been a lot going on lately, but about three athletes need to put aside their differences and stand together. And listen, it doesn't want everybody to live in a prison of fear right now. So basically, we got this promo from Cody Rhodes, basically, you know, talking about, Matt Jackson and, you know, Tony Khan and whatnot and about AEW's in, in existence. And that, you know, Nick Jackson is not here because, you know, he's selling the whole injury from last week. So we are continuing in the building blood and guts here, okay? Because even I wondered how this whole promo was going to work out in the beginning. And he couldn't make it to the show tonight. So, you know, talk about Hangman Page. Like, you don't want to be left behind. You want to prove that you're the heavyweight power. Like, you're, you're a mystery right now. But, um, yes, we both felt to beat Chris Jericho, but 
we're going to get over our reasons and, you know, go in blood and guts. He wants Kenny Omega back. And, um, huh, like, I, I need the, because, um, you know, he wanted Kenny Omega. And I need of them. No, I want them to be, what do you say, bridesmaids or something. This is a war, not a wedding. And he says, I need the real Kenny Omega back. I need the old Kenny Omega back, basically. The one that was, um, that proved he was the best in the world and the best bout machine. Honestly, I wish a lot of people would see that Kenny Omega back, but I think that was only in New Japan. And it says they need the elite uh, to be the elite to win this war. So Cody cut a very good promo out there, of course, um, as usual. Next thing you know, Omega and Matt Jackson came out. Omega pretty much talked about, you know, we haven't seen eye to eye before. We've been in each other's throats, but we need to pull together right now. And uh, listen, we don't know... What could happen next week if there even is a show, but they want to go out as the elite, okay? And Matt Jackson said Kenny was right, and it's just three of them right now that Nick isn't here due to the whole injury. And they don't know if they can fix this tonight, but, you know, Hangman Page came out. Of course, he had his drink in his hand, and Kenny pretty much says, you know what? I know there's no crowd here. We can't feel the energy, but he wants everybody at home to be able to enjoy as much as possible. So next thing you know, all the the lights, pyro, and even the uh, the music, everything started off for dynamite. Now, personally, after watching this first segment, because you know they um you know end up going to Jr. Taz and Excalibur, who were on commentary. Um, it was a good opening. Personally, I think it looked like some community theater segment. <laughs> they really did like it was a community theater segment of how they were all standing there with the lights off. And then it was like, cue the lights like they were doing this big intro and everything. But obviously, the show is still going to continue and everything. So it's basically business as usual. And we're going to do a show without fans. Okay, now... There was something in replace of the fans, and I actually said this the other day to somebody, and they thought my idea was pretty bad. I'm not going to throw any names out there. You know who you are if you're watching this, but um, what they did, especially after this um, community theater segment, I like to call it, um, we got some of the wrestlers actually... At ringside, now a lot of these people are on dark, so they probably don't really see them on TV in general. And I, I know it's a limit of people who they can let in the building right now, but I saw guys like what Colt Cabana and um, MJF and Sean Spear sitting there, which um, a lot of undercar guys also. But they were going to gamble during these matches too, like we're going to make some money. Warlow sitting right there, Tully Blanchard's right there. Uh, you know, later on you see people like Jake Roberts there, Lance Archer. Several guys are just, you know, sitting, so dare the crowd for tonight, okay? So there are, there, there is a crowd, and we have Brandy Rhodes, or Eden Styles, if you remember that name, doing the ring announcing tonight, so no Justin Roberts, and we did get matches on this show, so this was going to be a wrestling show, okay? Like I said before, I know there's a lot of people that... And I saw a lot of 50-50 comments. There's some people that said this was good. There's some people that said this was a bad idea, especially with this whole virus going on. You can't really trust anything going on, okay? But I guess the show must go on one way or another. Like I said, the only two wrestling companies that are really doing something right now, like I said before, are WWE and AEW. So they're, they're literally the only two things in the game right now because... I said they. I said it was a good idea if they just put fans out there and they can not fans, but I said it was a good idea if they just put the wrestlers out there as the fans. Okay, I said WWE should have did that too. Let's just put the wrestlers. Let's put the what is what, what someone said one time. Um, if you somebody said Paul Heyman did this back then. What we put the marks in the locker room and the wrestling school of students out there or something like that or the wrestlers and so they can get this over. And they tried, don't get me wrong, was like, what, maybe 10, 11 other wrestlers out there. But um, it's still odd in a way, but, you know, we're still trying to put on matches because the first one we got off was, you know, Best Friends and Lucha Brothers, Orange Cassidy was on commentary, so he didn't really have a lot to say. But, you know, this was a good match. I thought it was pretty good. I kind of figured who was going to win, but obviously they had to stretch time. A couple times throughout here. I know Orange Cassidy got involved. Because the Lucha Brothers was about to hit that spike power drive on the um on the ramp. But Orange Cassidy just walked away from the announce table. And he just splashed onto him while he had his hands in his pockets. And Best Friends was going to go for strong zero. But Pentagon hit a low blow on Beretta. And next thing you know the referee didn't see it. So 
There was still a Spike Pile Driver and the Lucha Brothers won the Death Triangle. There was no Pac here on this show, but um, it was um, the Death Triangle. Death Triangle got the win. Lucha Brothers. Mm. <coughs> mm. <sighs> okay. Okay, sorry about that. I had to check the mic. Something was wrong right there. But, um, yeah, like I said, Lucha Brothers ended up getting the win right there. Next thing you know, they had Tony Schiavone interview the best friends then about the loss they just took and what they were going to do about it. And they said next week we're going to be facing in a street fight, in the actual street. So, I guess they're going to be in a parking lot brawl next week. So, I cannot imagine this is how this is going to go now. Like I said, there are no fans right now. And we honestly don't know how long it's not going to be any fans in these crowds. So if we're going to be doing a street fight in the actual street in the parking lot. So basically what I'm about to see right here is a parking lot brawl. I'm not saying it's going to be Eddie Guerrero and John Cena from 2004 or anything or three. But obviously something like that is going to happen next week and you're going to put wrestlers all around the cars and i think jared and um kurt angle did this one time on tna also so that, that's what i can imagine a parking lot brawl looking like next week with the best friends and the lucha brothers i don't really want to see the best friends in this in general but um i guess we got to do one way or another like i said the biggest thing that take away from all these matches of course is the crowd when you have a hot crowd usually a lot of wrestlers feed off adrenaline when you're and like when you're watching these matches and then i say this about WWE the other day it feels like you're watching tryout matches that are going around along right now and it's like you know the wrestlers like the the students are just watching and learning right now what's going on in the ring or coaches or whatnot so i know it's a legitimate show but it does look a couple times like um it looks like a wrestling tryout match you're kind of watching. I kind of felt like that a couple times. Uh, but next we got a fatal four-way women's match. Rio, Chris Stallander, Hikaru Shida, and Penelope Ford. Uh, I guess this is going to do something that has to do with the rankings, which I know Penelope Ford isn't in it. I don't know why. I, honestly, I don't know why Penelope Ford was not even on TV a lot, to be honest, because she was actually good in this match. Now, don't get me wrong, this match was kind of sloppy couple times it wasn't bad it was pretty decent i feel like because usually i feel like when a lot of these um women's matches come on i feel like that's what kind of falls off with the crowd and looking at tonight's reaction this probably would have been the reaction if there was even a crowd in front of them right now so uh, you know my friend kyle called me a savage for saying that tonight but i'm like it's kind of true like either way crowd and that crowd this is the reaction they would usually get hey i was at revolution and i saw a women's title match and this is the reaction that tonight is what I saw when I was at Revolution a few weeks ago at the Winchester Arena in Chicago, okay? So, it's like crickets out there tonight, alright? Just like Revolution. This is this would have went either way with the women. Like, it was, it was an okay match, a couple bad, and, you know, Sabian got involved and got beat up a couple times. But, you know, Carl Sheeta won Pen and Penelope Ford, which makes sense because Penelope Ford is not in the rankings. But I thought she had, a, you know, a couple good spots out there in a way, especially that Poison Rana was pretty good from her two on uh, Chris Stallander, uh, but I thought Penelope Ford was probably one of the best things in this match. I wish they put her on TV more often, but, you know, Hikaru Shida got the win, so I guess that may be a title shot for us sooner or later, because they didn't with the Cole Cabana, who was there, and, you know, Cabana said it was kind of weird, because there's no crowd, and talked about Penelope Ford. It's really good, but, you know, she could have won that match if it wasn't for the scheming uh, boyfriend, Kip Sabian, which Kip Sabian pretty much says, you want to talk about me and get in my face? He shoved Cabana, but then Cabana, sh like, pretty much muffed him in the face, knocking him. I said, get out of here, all right? Just get out. You're not going to do nothing. You're going to run. So, yeah. But, um, honestly, this match, I guess, was it was this for a title match or something? Or some type of, I don't know, um, when I say it was a number one contenders match or anything, but, does this really move anything, or is this the, I don't know, man, these, the women matches is just kind of weird sometimes, uh, they then went to Jim, not Jim, John Moxley, uh, who was interviewed earlier today, going to his car, which he still has that Ferrari he got from Jericho, by the way, he took, uh, to Tony Schiavone, and 
you know, talk about he's not being medically clear to be here tonight. And, you know, I haven't been medically clear my whole life. And he says, I don't want to punch any cops or anything. So I'm going to go blow off some steam and drive around. And, you know, his Ford T GT car he has. I'm surprised he still has that car. But he's going to go drive around in that to blow off some steam. He still wants to get payback at the inner circle. But I guess that's going to have to wait until Blood and Guts. I'm assuming Blood and Guts is next week. So um, we'll see. If that's the only time we saw Moxley tonight. Um, next, I, was it this match, was it this match last week now I think about, it, but now it's only a little bit different, uh, the Jungle Express versus the Butcher, the Baker, and the Candlestick Maker, the only difference is this week it was just the Butcher and the Blade, no Bunny by the way, and I know MJF was teaming with him last week, but that's not happening, it's versus, you know, Jungle Boy and, um, and Luchasaurus. One positive I could take away from this match, uh, no Marco stunt, so that's already a positive for me. But um, the the match itself was not bad. I will say that it was it was actually pretty good. I thought the finish looked a little bit weird at first, but um, this this was not bad. Like I said, I know the other wrestlers on the outside, which they kind of got more to crowd, you know, somewhat to get involved. But it wasn't a bad match though, and I know MJF gave. The butcher and them money. I don't know why he keeps paying these guys to lose all the time, but I guess he wanted them to do their finish. But the Jungle Express ended up dodging, and um, um, <clears throat> ended up dodging, and you know Jungle Boy and and uh, Luchasaurus did their finish. I don't know what it was called, but um, if it was like a cutter or something, uh, it looked like, but or not an RKO or anything. But I don't know what their finisher was. But the Jungle Express won the match. As, once again, the Butcher, the Baker, and the Candlestick Maker continue to lose. Not a bad match or anything, but you know who's going to win this in general, okay? You know who's going to win this match. I knew just even looking at the beginning of this. Why MJF keeps paying these guys, I have no clue. Next, the Dork Order came out then, and I just rolled my eyes once I saw them. But they said the exhilarated one was going to be here tonight. And that going, he's going to open everyone's eyes, and the d members of the Dark Order, that, you know, the fans and everything, that the Exalted One is near until SCU came out, Daniels and Kazarian. Um, listen, you guys are not doing anything. You've been claiming this person for many, many weeks now, so it's not even happening yet. And um, next thing you know, uh, who shows up on the screen? We see someone talking. It's like the voice was distorted. But the next thing we know, we get the debut of Brody Lee. And this would have looked really cool with a crowd because he probably would have gotten a major pop if there was a crowd in front of this show tonight. And, you know, he talked about... Uh, the, first off, the, the biggest line I'm sure everybody's talking about tonight, what he said, like, he told Christopher Nance, like, you're not the first old man, the t uh, out of touch old man that... What is the line he said? Um, I actually wrote it down because I kind of forgot already. But he says, you're not the first old man. Um, I'm sorry, you're not the first out of touch old man to not believe in me. I think that was the line. I'm, I hope I'm right about that. But no, let me just check that to be sure. Yeah, because I actually had it right here. But um, yeah, I, yeah, I think I said it right anyways. You're not the first out of touch old man to uh to say to not believe in me basically so we all know who that was going to be taking a shot at of course like if you don't know who that's taking a shot mostly the WWE and Vince McMahon then uh you probably obviously don't know what you're talking about then if you don't know what any of that line means but that is what Brody Brody Lee ended up saying and everybody has been saying that tonight so there you go <clears throat> you have the first out of touch old man to believe in me. So obviously we know where that line um, was from tonight. But moving on in the show. Uh, well, not moving on to the show, but yeah, Brody Lee talked. He said that line. He talked about existence and everything, and that the exalted one is here. And. I don't remember everything else he said. A lot of it didn't make sense. Pretty much Brody Lee ended up taking down um, Daniels because he ended up popping up in the ring and he hit his big, you know, discus lariat on him. And the Dark Order pretty much went to the back then. So 
Listen, Brody Lee being the leader of the Dark Order, number one, I'm glad it wasn't Matt Hardy, because Matt Hardy, and we're going to get into that later, but I'm glad it wasn't him, because Matt Hardy probably would have been the only one cheered out of everybody in this whole thing, because nobody would care about the other guys. Brody Lee can work. I've never, listen, I've never really heard Brody Lee talk that much, and the internet keeps saying, well, he's this great promo guy, he's this great promo guy. I'm like, okay, we'll see. I never really saw him talk in, um, you know the WWE because he was mostly a henchman part of um the Wyatt family or anything but I thought he put a good promo out there of course I'm willing to give him a chance and, and stuff so it wasn't bad or anything but no I don't know if it answered really why he's the leader of the Dark Order I think the line people are really going to take out was like I said the you know you're not the first out of touch old man to say no one believed in me so we all know who that's taking a shot at and what company we're talking about here but like I said, it would have looked way better if it was a crowd, but I was surprised to see Brody Lee in this. I think it could work, hopefully, because honestly, the dark, the dark Order, Dark Order needs some type of juice. I don't really like the gimmick in general. I think it's pretty bad, and these guys look like jobbers, if you ask me, for a while now. And I just don't think a lot of people care about it, because almost like every time I see him on TV, I roll my eyes. So Brody Lee, I am interested in. Can he turn this thing around? I don't know. I'd rather like to see him as a single star, but... I'm just kind of glad it wasn't Matt Hardy and it was him. So, you know, I think it could work for him being the leader of it. He always seemed like the muscle guy out of a group. I would have put him in a single star. But let's see how he does in leading this whole Dark Order group. But it was nice to see Brody Lee. I wish they could have saved his debut from when it was a crowd. But I guess in these dire times right now, I guess they wanted to give it away early or something like that. Uh, but... Um, pretty much then, we went to ringside, Jake Roberts and Lance Archer was there, Jake Roberts cut another great promo as usual, um, pretty much says he didn't, you know, Archer didn't have much to say, but he talked about Cody ignoring him, and that's like a slap in the face, and, you know, what he wanted to do was not personal or anything, but now you've made it personal, because I, you're not, you know, I'm trying to get, you're not giving me the attention, and we want your attention right now. And Robert said, you're pro and he promised that you're going to get his attention, okay? Because, number one, you know, he watched him and his buddies come out here pretty much bitch like they were going to the prom and everything. But, and that focuses on the task at hand. So, he's pretty much coming after Cody and we're going to get the attention that we deserve. So, I'm sure sooner or later, and I feel like they're going to screw him out of this whole blood and guts match and everything. So, expect um, Archer to come out. During that match, which I feel like everybody's got a legend with them right now in AEW. Somebody brought this up. Hey, Tully Blanchard is with um, Sean Spears. Jake Roberts is with Lance Archer. And you got Arn Anderson with Cody Rhodes right now. So we got a lot of art, uh, a lot of legends, a lot of WCW legends, I should say, or WWF legends, uh, with someone current in um, in the company right now as a manager. Okay, but another great promo by Lance Archer. Now the video package. Um, did I say great promo by Lance Arch? I meant great promo by Jake Roberts. Let me correct myself. But um, now the video package, this was kind of weird now. Now, as a certain some would, would say, this looks like they were really in front of a outlaw mud show. Or these crackhead looking guys. And I think that was Wee Man from Jackass that was in the ring. Almost like it was a circus going on right there. And it says, you step in the ring or you die. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm thinking of, his thing I was thinking of when I was going to show a video of Lance Archer. I thought it would at least be a video about, you know, his career and what he's done over the years. And why you should take this guy as a threat. I actually thought maybe they would say, okay, I did, you know, Lance Archer, maybe Jake Roberts would talk in a video promo saying, hey, you need to watch out for this guy. This guy's done, wrestled all over the world, wrestling different companies, wrestled in New Japan, pro wrestling. I know we can't really mention what he's done that much over there, I think. I'm not going to say, like, hey, he was in Suzuki Goon or is in Suzuki Goon. He was U.S. champion or... Killer Elite Squad or, you know, TNA or anything, Lance Archer or Hoyt or whatever he did. But we go literally into some backyard, sh like I said, outlaw mud show. And you got Wee Man from Jackass. And it's like Archer's beating up all these job-looking crackheaded guys. And, and Jake Roberts is just sitting there like in a, in a chair smoking like a badass. Let me say that. That actually did look pretty cool. But Archer ended up killing all these guys before he left. Some dude tried to say something. And he started choke slamming his head on the car several times. So the video package of him in like the middle of, not in the middle of nowhere, but like some type of farm or the woods or 
somewhere backyard somewhere just I don't know man it's like we're trying to say all right we're trying to say okay he's tough but you're beating up all these out of shape weak looking job guys or scrubs or just crackheads out there something about that just didn't make sense in a way I could see like I said for I could see if they talked more about him and say okay he was beating up some legitimate tough guys I thought it was gonna be like a video package or something in his career like like I said before why this guy is this tough why you should fear him why Cody Rhodes should watch out like you know Jake Roberts could have said something to get him over if they because all you really saw was Lance Archer beating up like I said job guys and then he said does so everybody dies everybody dies everybody dies everybody dies you die he die all die all die. it's like his problems in New Japan everybody dies John Moxie John Moxie everybody dies 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 die die that's all he pretty much says everybody dies all the time because that's his whole gimmick and whatnot but um the, 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 the video package was kind of strange though okay I like the promo but the video package was strange. All right, that didn't make a lot of sense to me, but we'll see what happens from that, but at least show Lance Archer for some type of clip or I don't know how much rights they can use from other companies, but show something and tell you why this guy was impressive or a beast or a monster or multi-time champion in other companies or something like that because we know he's wrestled other places, so that's what I would have done. But we then went to the main event then, um, which was the Inner Circle, um, who came out, Santana Ortiz and Jake Hager, and um, Sammy Guevara, who's at ringside, and then Chris Jericho came out, which in a way now I feel like it's a little bit odd, because no one is singing along to Judas, and we showed Guevara and MJF and Spears trying to sing Judas, and Guevara just sung very badly on the microphone and it's like they're all trying to look cool it, which it was kind of funny i'll admit it was funny with mj mjf was really funny throughout the night mjf was kind of keeping one of those things i was entertained by ringside talking on his phone gambling pretty much saying i don't need to work tonight i'd be cody rhodes paying off people just give, just winning money from sean spears and stuff so um i i don't know and, you know, I'm seeing more different people throughout the crowd throughout the night because then they got Billy Gunn and his son out there and uh, Dustin R- Rhodes or Red Dust, if you want to, whatever you want to call Dustin or whatnot, and QT Marshall and Brandy and whatnot for the main event because, like I said, Jericho's music hits and they're all singing and Jericho got on commentary. And, you know, it was the elite coming out then. You know, Hangman didn't have a drink, but... This is a very long main event, let me say that. They had to eat up time, and we had to eat up time, especially for the next 30 minutes, which a lot of this match was, like, in and out um, when you look at it. Jericho was good on commentary, and even, you know, Kavar yelling from ringside and whatnot, but, um, yeah, the, the, the match, like, it, it took a lot of time to get through. A lot of outside, a lot of Cody outside, I'll say that, um... You know, especially Cody and Jake Hager brawling to the outside of the ring. Page and them going just... It, it was... It wasn't a bad match, but it was like everywhere, to be honest. And I know Matt Jackson came in and just started doing his whole multiple Northern Lights suplexes on everybody. And I guess he was looking at Hangman did, which I guess they were going for a Meltzer driver. Which, um... And this was kind of an odd someone point this out, because you can see Jake Hager kind of waiting right there. It's like they had to wait for a spot. Hager just had to get ready for his cue, because Hangman was really stalling if he could do it in that. And Hager finally grabbed his, you know, foot and pulled him off the floor. And Santana ended up getting a roll-up for the win, so it's almost like they had to eat up some time at that point. Because, uh, you know, Inner Circle now gets the advantage for... For you know, blood and guts now since that's coming up, so at least they have an advantage in the numbers game. But then, right after, since there was some time left, Jericho ended up getting on the microphone and talking about the elite, saying, like, you know, I declare no fans here, or any other future, any future event. I don't care what happens to the world right now, but no fans are allowed. Hand wash, hangman, he called him just a, a lot to what he said, and y- you know. Pretty much, they looking at Brandy then. Uh, what do you want, Brandy? And he says, your husband's on the ground. You want some of the Spanish God, which, you know, Sammy pretty much held up his shirt and then pretty much said, hit me up because your husband's a loser. Matt Jackson got the mic then and pretty much said, you think you have the advantage. You think this is five to four and, you know, blood and guts. But um, he called in a favor for a friend since Nick Jackson is hurt. Who shows up and, by God, the crowd probably would have went gotten a super or a mega pop from this but who shows up vanguard one the drone himself 
And next thing you know, Matt Jackson pointed behind, and it was Matt Hardy in the crowd, in the stands somewhere, as he did his delete thing, saying that, and you know, the piano thing, play, his piano music played, and he did the delete, delete, delete. So Matt Hardy is now in AEW, which I'm sure we all know he was going in AEW, but since Nick Jackson is out of blood and guts, we're going to get Matt Hardy. So we saw two debuts tonight, okay? Now I feel like this match was kind of long to eat up time and everything, so he probably could have done something else during this, but I think more important was after the match, especially getting Matt Hardy in. Now, I know some people say it's going to um, look kind of bad in a way because most of this match was either A, somewhat, or this whole show is a spot fest, or B, the fact that you had two major debuts on here with no crowd isn't the same. Because let me tell you right here, if you had a crowd out here tonight, Brody Lee and Matt Hardy probably would have gotten a mega pop from a crowd tonight or from whatever the city they're going to be in. Because right now... It's going to be in the Daily's place for a while, okay? Depending on how long this virus thing holds up. Okay, and I'll give AEW this. They've made the best out of a bad situation, okay? Because to what I've heard tonight, they basically just beat NXT by a landslide because all NXT had was just video packages. That's why I said in the beginning of the video, I'm most likely not really going to do a review for that, okay? So, you know, that's why because it wasn't really anything going on. On that show. And the only thing I probably heard today was what Mania is supposed to be a two day thing. I don't know much about that. I'll explain that another time. That's if I even think Mania is still even happening going into this. But like I said before. They did what they could do for the past two hours to at least get something going on with this. It wasn't perfect by any chance. And it still had its problems here and there. But just from the little thing they did. It's almost like business as usual. We're just going to put on a wrestling show. Okay. That's all they did. Like I said, I didn't think it was going to be a good idea to put video packages because a lot of people said, just put out video packages. Put on top 10 because you don't want to want to risk the talent. You don't want to put their health in jeopardy or anything because we're going to be seeing this on the Daily's Place for a while, okay? We're not getting any crowds. You can't really go anywhere. This is probably the only building they can really go to because the Khan family owns this building. So that's the reason why AEW is even at the Daily's Place in Jacksonville because that's home base. And we're going to be seeing it from home base for a while now. Okay, but I actually thought this was a good show. So like I said before, I thought it was a good idea to at least put some of the wrestlers out there and act like they are the fans. Or anything I know it's not saying much, but when you have like a roster, of, I don't know how big the roster is for AEW to be honest, but it's not big. And I guess like we'll just throw everybody out there. We're just gonna act like it's a regular show and do pyro and everything. Cause already tonight I'm seeing people saying, "Well, they did better than WWE. They did better than WWE." And Honestly, right now, we don't know who really is doing better than anybody. I would say they probably mostly did better than NXT tonight because um, at least, you know, Raw and SmackDown had some type of shows. And it's better than playing, you know, the entire Royal Rumble match over and they put on new stuff. So we're going to continue with business as usual. But it is still pretty strange that, you know, Matt Hardy and Brody Lee had no, like I said, it's strange that you bring them out to no crowd. But at the same time. This is still going to get people talking. And with all these shows going on right now, hopefully the ratings do come up. <coughs> Honestly, I think the ratings should go be going up in any shows. And I heard the ratings been going up every show. It's not like anybody can go anywhere right now. You pretty much need to quarantine in the house or you go out anywhere. It's too big of a risk right now. Like a lot of people said tonight, it was still a bit of a risk in doing these shows. Because of this whole virus thing, you don't want to risk anybody's help. And I'm sure they tested everybody anyways before this happened. So, like I said before, we don't know how long this is going to last. Because this is going to be a long, going on a long time from now, okay? And that's what any wrestling show, okay? You're going to be seeing empty crowds. You're going to be seeing just empty shows from small places. What choice does anyone have right now, Okay. Every other wrestling company right now is out the game right now in this. So, like I said, you only have two things going on. You either have WWE or you have AEW or any other show that has some type of tapes to it right taping right now for the for continuity. Like I said earlier, that's what you have to watch. But tonight was one of those the best out of a bad situation, okay? And they did what they could for two hours and just going along. And act like everything is normal. I know everything's not normal. But 
at least they at least they tried they gave it a shot and they did prove something and like i said it's a lot of 50 50 between fans to what i've seen on the internet tonight some people like it some people don't like this idea okay and i can understand it but i said this like i said a couple days ago and i think yesterday in the raw and impact review because i know everybody's saying this is going to come back by April, this is going to come back by May, this is going to come back by June, July, all these postponements and reschedulings. And don't get me wrong, I hope stuff come back soon enough so everything can get back to normal. But let's be honest with ourselves, we don't know how long this is going to go with this whole virus thing. So that's why I kind of look at these projected dates are like, are you sure this is going to be back at this time? Are you sure this is going to happen? Because how far are we going to keep pushing back stuff, huh? How far? So, that's the thing. Because like I said before, a lot of companies can't do anything right now. A lot of them can't make money. The people that probably have the most money right now, currently, is between WWE and AEW. And that's why they are still going. Because they mostly got the most money and TV deals. Because my friend Kyle told me this tonight. They have TV deals and they have money. So, that's actually a good reason to why they're even still going right now. Okay? But other than that... I enjoyed this show. Like I said, it's a little awkward sometimes walking without a crowd, but they did their best. There are pros and negatives to this, but at least they tried and they put on something. So we're trying to make the best out of a bad situation because we don't know how long this bad situation is about to go. But other than that and me talking about ranting at the end of this, comment, subscribe, tell me what you thought about this show. Or anything that had to do with AEW tonight. Did you enjoy this empty arena show? Because right now we're going to be seeing a lot of empty arena shows and wrestling. Okay? So follow me on Twitter at HoodedNight890. I will see you guys later. I'm out of here. Peace out.